I find the more information that I see on screen, the more productive I am. With the second screen, I can code on one and use my communication tools on the other, or video edit on one and research on the other. But unfortunately, for most of my life, adding a traditional large external monitor just hasn't made sense. You see, I've lived in a small studio or one bedroom apartment where I just didn't have room for a desk. Keeping a large external monitor on my dining room table would have been a bit of an eyesore, so I avoided it, and instead I just used my laptop. Even when I was a student, I studied a lot in coffee stores where obviously there wasn't enough space for a large external monitor, nor did I want to lug one around with me. Because of this, I tended to favour laptops with larger displays, like 17 inches for my productivity work. These are often heavier and bulkier, therefore I've always had my eye on portable monitors designed for laptops. A high quality external monitor that used a single cable for charging and data, like this one, was the dream. Something small that I could fit in the spaces I just mentioned and up my productivity. For years I've seen these devices and been massively disappointed. Low brightness panels, low resolution, poor quality screens that required multiple cables to operate. But one day I got a reach out from GMK, a company I'd never heard of. They wanted to see if I'd take a look at their 4K portable external monitor. A large 14 inch screen, high 4K resolution, only requires one cable to operate, yes please. Look, I get tons of these reach outs on this channel from unknown manufacturers looking to get coverage for their tech. Honestly, it's mostly cheap garbage that I can't recommend so I just ignore it, but this one sounded promising so I thought I'd give it a go. And by the way, this video is not sponsored, I cannot be bought. Manufacturers send me their tech at their own risk. Let's get into it. The build quality feels good, the kickstand is sturdy and the hinge feels like it's going to last. The panel itself is high quality. My unit is a 14 inch 4K 60Hz panel and I recorded just over 300 nits of brightness. The screen is quite glossy and you'll likely see the reflections on it in my B-roll. That being said I had no problems using the screen when indoors, it was bright enough as a second monitor. In terms of colour accuracy, I measured 100% of sRGB, 87% of Adobe RGB and 91% of P3. It's therefore good enough for pretty much most things other than colour grading a movie or print work. The screen is also a touchscreen, but I don't really use touchscreens on laptops. Look, let me say this, my ultimate measure of the quality of a display is how much information I'm able to see on it without feeling like I'm squinting. That is determined by a number of factors. The amount of pixels the screen has, more pixels like on this 4K screen will make the image crisper, the brightness, the screen size, etc etc. In the case of this display, I was comfortably able to run it at 200% window scaling, which showed a ton of information on screen, same amount of content as running a full HD monitor at its native 1920 resolution, just crisper. The panel comes with a ton of different cables for connectivity, two USB-C cables, a micro USB cable, an HDMI connection cable and even a little power brick if you want to power the screen directly. One thing I took a look at is how useful this setup is compared to buying a laptop with a larger display. So I compared my Acer Swift X laptop with this external monitor to my Aero 17 which has an extremely high quality 17 inch 4K display. I set both setups to a window scaling that I found comfortably showed the most information on screen without needing to squint. I then used Excel as a proxy to measure how much content I could see on each screen setup. On the Aero 17 I was able to see 1674 cells of Excel. On the Acer Swift X and the external monitor I was able to see 1305 cells on each of the displays. That is an additional 56% extra visible cells on Excel on this dual display setup. Additionally, the Aero 17 weighed over 400 grams more or just under a pound more than my dual display setup. Plus, the dual display setup allows me to more easily lay out windows by simply maximising different ones to different displays. Look, you may say, hey, a larger laptop like the Aero 17 has other benefits like more powerful components and of course I agree with you, but it depends what you are doing. For example, if you are coding, doing mostly CPU tasks, the Ryzen 7 5800U processor in the Asus Swift X with this external monitor is a really good alternative. You see more information on screen, it weighs less, it costs a lot less, and it still has a very powerful CPU. 
By the way, I did test the display on both a Windows PC and a Mac and also Linux and found no issues. Lastly, the price of this monitor is pretty decent at around 300 US dollars. Make sure to look in the description below this video because I'll be posting discount coupon codes if I have them down there. So it is a pretty affordable way of getting more out of your laptop. Before you go out and buy one though, this wouldn't be a Josh video if I didn't tell you the issues I'd found with it. Firstly, the display uses PWM flickering to lower the brightness, so it flickers the screen on and off very fast to create the effect of brightness being lowered. Many people, including me, will be uncomfortable with this. However, I do want to say one thing about why on this display, for the use case that I use it for, it wasn't an issue. Because the screen only has reasonable brightness of 300 nits, I found I only ever ran the display at 100% brightness where I didn't observe flickering. If the monitor was brighter, say 500 nits, then I'd probably want to lower it at times. Also, if this was a screen I was likely to use in the dark, like watching a movie, I'd want to lower the brightness and it would annoy me. Look, your use case for this screen may be different to mine, but in my case, using the screen as a second monitor to assist in productivity work, it just wasn't an issue. However, GMK in future definitely address this. Next, on a couple of occasions, the monitor had some odd behavior. For example, it only displayed at 1080 resolution rather than 4K, or it only displayed content in a quarter of the screen rather than the whole thing. Pulling out the connection and putting it back in via a different USB-C port, for example, there are two, fixed it. Another problem occurred when raising the brightness of the display and the display's built-in speakers when the monitor was powered via a USB-C cable. The monitor would crash and restart, setting them both to low settings. I assume this was due to not enough power driving the monitor. And yes, it was fixed if I powered the monitor via the micro USB cable. Luckily, I had no need to use the display's built-in speakers anyway, so it wasn't an issue. Also, when connected to a laptop that was running on battery power, once the monitor switched off and then turned back on again. The menu system, although intuitive to navigate, the sliders are really sensitive. It's quite hard to get the slider to 100% screen brightness, for instance. The display also has built-in speakers. They really aren't the best quality. I understand they are there because the monitor can be used with GMK's other products like their Nook Box, which doesn't have speakers. But for those plugging this into a laptop, they are a waste of time. Every laptop I've tested had better speakers than this. The display does not work well with portrait mode. That's because the kickstand isn't angled correctly when in that mode. It also doesn't act as a USB hub, so you can't plug it into a laptop, then plug other devices into the display. That would be a really useful thing to have, as many small laptops don't have a lot of ports, so it could be a problem if you're using up one of your ports just for the monitor. Lastly, and most importantly, the monitor is power hungry. We noticed the laptop's battery draining much faster when the monitor was plugged in and being powered by the laptop. I would recommend you only run this monitor when your laptop is plugged into an outlet. Let's wrap. At the end of the day, I like this monitor. I think it is a good way of leveling up the productivity you get from your laptop. It's a useful add-on for gamers to check their social media while playing. It's a good way for programmers to communicate with their team members while coding. And it's a great way for students to watch YouTube videos like this one while completing their assignments. It's relatively affordable, the screen is good quality, and it's portable. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of effort that goes into making these videos, but as I always say, it makes my mum happy. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and I will catch you later. I wonder if people are gonna like it. I know it's different to our normal laptop reviews, but it's still a related topic.